Today, we're breaking down the real differences between HIV and AIDS, and the symptoms every man should watch for. It's about empowering you to recognize the signs, understand the progression of the virus, and know when it's time to seek medical advice. Staying informed is one of the most proactive things you can do for your long-term health. So, grab a seat, get focused, and let's dive deep into this. We'll be visualize what we're talking about so you can get a comprehensive understanding. My goal is for you to leave this video feeling more confident and knowledgeable about this topic than when you clicked on it. Let's get started. Alright, let's start at the beginning. The acute stage of HIV infection. This is the earliest phase and it typically kicks in about 2-4 to four weeks after the virus enters the body. Now what does that feel like? For many people, it feels a lot like a really bad case of the flu. We're talking fever, chills, a sore throat, and body aches that just won't quit. It's your body's initial, powerful immune response trying to fight off this new invader. Your immune system is sounding the alarm and these symptoms are the blaring sirens. Beyond those classic flu-like signs, other symptoms can pop up during this acute phase. A widespread rash is a common one. It often appears on the torso and can consist of red, flat areas with small bumps. You might also notice your lymph nodes getting swollen, particularly in your neck, armpits, or groin. These are your body's filters, and they're working overtime to trap the virus, causing them to swell up. It's a clear sign that your immune system is engaged in a major battle. Gastrointestinal issues can also be part of the picture. This can mean nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. Your gut is incredibly sensitive to systemic inflammation, so when your whole body is reacting to the virus, your digestive system often reacts too. Another telltale, though less common sign can be painful sores or ulcers inside your mouth or on your genitals. These can make eating and drinking uncomfortable and are a direct result of the virus's impact on your mucous membranes. The tricky part about this stage is that not everyone experiences these symptoms. Some people might have symptoms so mild they barely notice them, or they might have no symptoms at all. This is incredibly dangerous because they can unknowingly pass the virus to others while feeling perfectly fine. The virus is multiplying rapidly during this stage, making the viral load in the blood extremely high, which means the risk of transmission is at its peak. And here's the most critical takeaway for this stage, because the symptoms are so nonspecific, it's incredibly easy to mistake them for something else. You think you have the flu, mononucleosis, or just a random bug. You take some over-the-counter meds, rest up, and after a week or two, you feel better. But the virus hasn't gone away, it's just gone quiet. This is why you can't rely on symptoms alone to know your status. After the initial acute phase, the virus moves into its second stage known as chronic HIV infection, or clinical latency. The word latency here can be a bit misleading. It doesn't mean the virus is dormant or gone, it just means the symptoms have largely disappeared. For many this is the longest stage of the infection, and without treatment it can last for an average of 10 years, though this can vary widely from person to person. During this time, you might feel completely healthy. Inside your body, however, a very different story is unfolding. The human immunodeficiency virus is still active. It's continuing to replicate just at much lower levels than in the acute stage. It's systematically targeting and destroying a specific type of immune cell called the CD4 cell, or T cell. Think of these CD4 cells as the generals of your immune system's army, the virus is slowly and quietly taking out the leadership, weakening your body's overall defense system over a period of years. Because there are often few or no symptoms during this chronic stage, many people don't know they have HIV. They feel fine, they look healthy, and they go about their daily lives completely unaware that the virus is progressively damaging their immune system. This lack of symptoms makes regular testing so incredibly vital. You can't feel your CD4 count dropping, you can't feel the virus replicating. The only way to know what's happening inside your body is to get tested. This is also a critical point to understand about transmission. Even if you have no symptoms, you can still transmit HIV to others. The virus is present in your blood and other bodily fluids. While modern antiretroviral therapy, or ART, can reduce the viral load to undetectable levels, making transmission virtually impossible, that only happens if you know you have HIV and are on treatment. An untreated person in the chronic stage is still infectious, even if they feel perfectly healthy. So, the key message for this stage is a warning against complacency. Feeling good is not a reliable indicator of being HIV negative. If you've ever been in a situation where you could have been exposed, 
even if it was years ago, getting tested is the only way to be sure. The silent nature of this stage is what allows the virus to do its damage unchecked. Catching it during this chronic phase before it progresses is the key to getting on treatment and preventing the move to the final, most severe stage. If HIV is left untreated, it will eventually overwhelm the immune system, leading to the third and final stage acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, or AIDS. This is not a separate virus, it's actually the most advanced stage of HIV infection. A person is diagnosed with AIDS when their immune system is severely damaged. Medically, this is defined either by having a very low number of CD4 cells, specifically, a count below 200 cells per cubic millimeter of blood, or by the development of certain severe illnesses, known as opportunistic infections. The symptoms of AIDS are, well, pretty severe, and reflect a body that can no longer defend itself. Significant unintentional weight loss, sometimes called wasting syndrome, is common. And this isn't just losing a few pounds, it's a substantial loss of body mass. You might experience chronic, drenching night sweats and recurrent fevers that have no other explanation. A profound and persistent fatigue can set in, making even simple daily tasks feel monumental. Your body is running on empty, with no defenses left. Because the immune system is compromised, the body becomes vulnerable to opportunistic infections, illnesses that a healthy immune system would normally fight off with ease. This can include a specific type of pneumonia called PCP, a fungal infection in the throat called thrush that can be persistent and severe, or tuberculosis. Skin problems are also prevalent, including purplish spots on the skin known as Kaposi's sarcoma, or persistent rashes and sores that just won't heal. These are signs that pathogens are taking over. Neurological problems can also arise. This can range from memory loss and confusion to depression, or more severe movement and coordination problems. The virus can directly affect the brain and nervous system, leading to what's known as AIDS-related dementia complex. For men specifically, there can be additional symptoms. Sores or ulcers on the penis can occur, and some men may develop hypogonadism, a condition where the testes don't produce enough testosterone, leading to fatigue, depression, and loss of libido. It's crucial to understand that today with effective treatment, most people with HIV will never progress to AIDS. Antiretroviral therapy, or ART, stops the virus from replicating, allowing the immune system to recover and the CD4 count to rise. An AIDS diagnosis is not a death sentence like it once was. People can and do recover from opportunistic infections, and with consistent treatment, their immune systems can be rebuilt. But this all hinges on early diagnosis and starting and staying on that life-saving treatment. So there you have it, a breakdown of the three stages of HIV infection, from the initial flu-like symptoms to the silent chronic phase, and finally to the severe stage of AIDS. We've covered a lot, but the goal here is not to scare you, it's to arm you with knowledge. Understanding how this virus works, what the signs are, and how it progresses, is the first step in protecting yourself and taking control of your health. The landscape of HIV has been transformed by modern medicine, turning what was once a terminal illness into a manageable chronic condition. The most important message I want you to take away from this video is this. The only way to know for sure if you have HIV is to get tested. If you have concerns or symptoms, talk to a healthcare provider. Early treatment can help you live a long, healthy life. Don't let fear or uncertainty hold you back. A simple test can give you the answers you need to move forward, whether that means peace of mind or starting a treatment plan that can save your life. There is no shame in getting tested, it's a responsible and powerful act of self-care. Thank you for sticking with me through this important discussion. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might need to see it. Spreading accurate information is how we fight stigma and empower our community. And as always, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss our future videos. Stay safe, stay informed, and I'll see you in the next one.